Okay, so I figured I'd build a retro console using a Pi Zero 2W as the performance is so good. And uh, I ordered this controller a while ago uh, with the intention of using it with a 7 inch screen. Unfortunately, it doesn't stretch wide enough for a 7 inch screen, so I'm going to have to take it apart. But if I'm going to take it apart anyway, I figured I might as well go big. Uh, so this is a 14 inch WiMAX display. And it is great. It comes away from this and you've got Visa mounts on the back so you can mount something to the back of it uh, and it basically ends up being like this. Uh, and I figured it would be quite nice as a console. So let's plug something into it and show you how it can be completely portable. So because this stretches this far uh, and a bit further than that, that's all I can do, so I'm way off. But I figured I could probably take it apart. because if you look at the back, it's got some Phillips screws in it. Uh, and also some Phillips screws on the front. Uh, I'm sure I won't be able to get it back together again, but I could certainly clamp this on the side somehow uh, and be able to use it and be able to hold it as a 14 inch tablet, in theory. So I need to shut this one down at the back because it's got my only mini to HDMI adapter. So at the moment I haven't got very short cables. This would be mini HDMI to mini HDMI, and I realize I can get a much shorter one than that, but this is just to show that it works. So one of them goes into here, like that, and then USB-C goes into one of these sockets. I think it's probably that one. So HDMI, and you can see this battery is one of the Pi Sugar ones, so this is magnetic. So it can be really quite slim in a build. There's a little magnet on this board, and it attaches to the Pi Zero just with a couple of screws and that's where it gets its power from. So if I plug this one in to basically going into the micro USB socket, but I've got an adapter going micro to USB-C, USB-C to USB-A, obviously I can make that much shorter uh, and much neater. So there's a little switch underneath, which is here, so let's switch that on and you'll see what happens. So you can see here, if I hit start, and uh, so for instance accessories and uh, imager it's all working really nicely as a desktop i have some games on here i've recently done a video on psp so under games and psp i haven't tried out ps1 yet i couldn't get uh, redream to work but uh, yeah i'm going to play around with it try and get this controller to go with it so the next thing really to do is to get this controller apart and see if i can extend whatever cables are in there to make it clamp either side Okay, so let's pair the controller. I've already got a Bluetooth keyboard uh, connected up to this system from a previous video. So let's click on Bluetooth and add device. I need to press and hold uh, Home and X on the controller to put it into a pairing mode. You can see it's pairing now. Uh, and let's find it on this list. PG9087 and pair. Pairing request. Waiting for a response, connected successfully. Right, let's launch PSP and just check that it's working. Okay, so yeah, left and right is working. Uh, oh, but up is down and down is up. That's a bit weird. So let's press A. Yeah, A selects all right. Yeah, up is down and down is up. That's easily fixed, but uh, it's going to be a bit annoying if I've got to reverse everything if I want to use my Xbox controller in this. But I suppose if I'm building a system for this, uh, it's not too much of an issue. You just have to configure it once. Uh, there is another way of connecting this with a micro USB, and it's supposed to be uh, like a Windows controller, which maybe will do it differently, but I was kind of figuring I'd use this as Bluetooth. Uh, just for convenience really rather than have another cable plugged in um, but uh, yeah at least we know it works so now if I take it apart and it stops working I know it's my fault rather than the controller didn't work in the first place. So I've been trying to think how the best way to take this apart is now obviously I have those screws four screws and four, uh, two screws here but I think probably I need to release some sort of spring so I can see there's some screw holes here. So I think what I might do is take off one of the back panels and hopefully I can release the spring without breaking it because there's some little Phillips screws in there. So let's give that a try first. Yeah, that feels like it's gonna come off. All right, from my screwdriver kit, let's get one of these, free it up a bit more. It's coming, but it's stuck on something. It feels like something doesn't wanna go. Yeah, that edge is tight for some reason. These buttons are still working. Okay, I think I'm gonna abandon that because that doesn't seem to wanna come apart. 
and I'm figuring I can probably just cut the spring. So I'm going to put those two back in, do as little damage as possible, because it is good with my Android device, uh, with that Samsung Galaxy S8 I use it with. It is actually a decent controller. So, yeah, I reckon I'm going to do these first. It'd be good if this was the spring. Oh, <laughs> nice noise. Okay, so that's those two out. So what do they do? Oh, ah, okay, it's not springy anymore. One side's not springy. Yeah, that side's not springy anymore. So is this one just gonna need to release? Okay, that's probably good. All right, I reckon this holds it in place and these could come in handy for when I piece it back together again because I can get screws through there into wood or something. Okay, <laughs> oh no. I wasn't hoping for a ribbon cable. Uh, I was hoping there'd be like normal cables in there. Oh, ribbon's gonna be a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't thinking ribbon cable. I was thinking conventional cables. Uh, that could be a problem. I wonder if it will, it's weird how the, the spring has gone from one side but not from the other. Yeah, that, right, that's, that's a spring which is still attached to that side. So I can possibly, I don't want to ruin this ribbon cable, possibly undo these four screws. Oh, oh that one's right, so that's let the spring come out. Probably a good thing. I'm still way off, but I might, okay, so I might, oh yeah, so it fits the seven inch. If that still works, that fits the seven inch. I might have to abandon the, um, Unless I do it in portrait, I might have to abandon the 14 inch tablet. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna stretch that any more than it is, but that is definitely wider than it's been. So it's still working, but I can't really see myself getting that as a ribbon cable. I wonder if, I wonder if I can get rid of this metal bit, if this, this whole metal bit, and then I've just got a ribbon cable. Oh, okay. And there's a bit, a bit of tape in there, just kind of holding that in place. Yeah, so that can come out. I've got this cool bit of uh, aluminium here. Um, but that at least will work with my seven inch tablet. So yeah, not the 14 inch tablet that I thought it was gonna be because I have no idea how to extend that ribbon cable. It's just, it's just too fiddly. I mean, looking at it, there could be like 10 to 15 wires in there. I suppose there is a possibility it could have a clip-in connector uh, similar to the Pi Zero. Uh, if I was to take it apart, but I think before I take it apart I'm going to go down the 7 inch route and I might revisit the 14 inch route in the future uh, So I've been having a look at screens uh, I've bought this down from the loft. This was uh, This monstrosity was uh, the way that I connected my Pi 4 to my 14 inch monitor before uh, I did a video on that Good thing about the Pi 4 is the compatibility is amazing and obviously it's more powerful uh, I've even got the velcro on the back of this uh, power bank uh, which is a very cheap power bank. I think I paid about 10.99. Hello. It's a decent power bank, but it's very, very heavy. So luckily for me, I've been sent two different seven-inch monitors. I've done separate videos on both of these. This is the Ymaxit seven-inch monitor. This is the EVI CIV, and they do things differently. So this one comes with adapters for a 3B. So HDMI to HDMI adapters. Uh, what's this? Micro to USB A. I've got another micro to USB A, but slightly different. Uh, and then I've got a micro HDMI to HDMI. So that's various different ways of connecting to this. And there is, uh, so there's a touch adapter here, which means that it doesn't have to be outside of the display, which is really important because I'm gonna clamp controllers on the side of this display uh, or on a board that comes out slightly proud of this display. Uh, so this HDMI obviously would be inaccessible with the controllers there and the power, but I have an HDMI socket here as well. I could probably do with some L-shaped HDMI adapters. I think this provides um, power to the monitor. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it gets it through the touch one as well. Uh, in my video, I go through that um, in greater detail. But whichever one I choose uh, will depend on which one kind of goes together the easiest, really. So I've also got on this EVI CIV, uh, a USB-A to power, so this can power the monitor from the USB-A, uh, which is great. Uh, I also have a full-size HDMI to a ribbon cable, because although it's got an HDMI which wouldn't help me sticking out, 
I've also got this HDMI that goes inwards, uh, which is great for this sort of build. Uh, and especially if you were going to put some sort of casing on it, uh, this is also a micro HDMI for the Pi 4, so that would also go into there and then plug into the Pi 4. Although looking at it um, from a USB touch point of view, I don't think I have another USB touch option here. So I've got 5 volt and touch, so that powers it, but also supplies touch control. But I don't think there's another way of getting touch control, uh, which is less important from the controller point of view because I'm going to be using, well actually no I do, because I'm using Raspberry Pi OS I do need some sort of touch control. Uh, there are these extra pins, there's so much stuff on here. I wonder if touch might be able to go through that power one as well. I'm not sure. Um, it's, uh, yeah I'd have to have a look at that. So I'll work out which one I'm going to put together and, uh, and let's see what we can get. Okay so the problem I seem to be having is uh, definitely that the Pi doesn't output a signal to a monitor that isn't on and uh, I can't get it that the monitor comes on before the Pi, uh, which I think would probably fix the situation. If I plug power in separately, it works fine. But uh, on both of them, I turn on the Pi and uh, it doesn't switch on unless I supply external power to the monitor, which is weird because the 14-inch WiMAX display, which obviously takes a lot more power, doesn't do that. So I've been trying this for ages and uh, I've had to give up on the Pi Sugar for these monitors and that's only because what seems to be happening is my Pi won't boot unless there is an HDMI there and uh, I've tried force hot plug, I've tried a few other things in config.txt and whenever I try I just can't get it to boot uh, unless there is a display present. Now uh, and I've got SSH enabled and various different things that have been suggested on forums and, and in write-ups. So what I've ended up doing is using my power bank because what I can do then via this micro USB, plug it into the power socket there. That supplies power to the monitor. The monitor then supplies power to the Pi Zero via this uh, one that says touch. So you can see it's going micro USB to micro USB. So there's obviously another way of doing this, a neater way of doing this, but this was more of a proof of concept because I've been trying this for ages and I couldn't get it to work. So I'll spin this around and I'll show you it booting up. Okay, so if I plug in the micro USB, the light comes on straight away, the monitor starts to boot up. Let's change the angle. Okay, so that's all started up and the touch screen is working as you can see. So if I shut that down, Okay, so I'm definitely getting much closer, uh, but there needs to be a part two to this because this is taking ages. And uh, I quite like this, which is micro USB to USB A, and then I put a little micro USB to A adapter in there, uh, which is supplying touch. Uh, but I need to get HDMI from here to here. I know I can do it from this side, but I was trying to keep it all enclosed. Trouble is, it looks like I'm going to have to power it from this side socket. Uh, which isn't going to be ideal, but I've got a little bit of uh, width to be able to play with so I could probably get around that, but certainly not as simple as I thought this was going to be. So I've just had another breakthrough uh, using a micro USB to USB A, a USB A female to micro USB and a micro USB to USB A adapter, which is going to plug into the power bank. So this should be pretty much it. Uh, I just need to work a way of uh, attaching the controllers and just making sure it doesn't fall apart. Okay, so uh, hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Fingers crossed for a part two.